This is part two of the tutorial on how to use the match database. And in this part two, I will uh, show you some of the more advanced features of this database, which are probably only interesting for people working with twins. So let's start by clicking on analysis specific traits, and then we're going to select one specific trait. So go to the sub chapter level, and then from this second drop down menu, select uh, function of brain. So that's over here. Then we go to MC versus DC, click on that, and that will give you scatter plots of the MC twin correlation versus the DC twin correlation for all pairs, same sex pairs only, male pairs only, and female pairs only. For each of these uh, scatter plots, there were two null hypotheses that we tested. The first one was whether What, what the proportion of studies was that is consistent with the null hypothesis that twice the difference between the MC and DC twin correlations is e equal to zero. The second null hypothesis that we tested is whether twice the DC twin correlation minus the MC twin correlation is zero. And in this table below the scatter plots, we provide the outcomes of, this, of testing these null hypotheses. So uh, this one is probably the most interesting, and in this case, 99% uh, of the studies were consistent with a null hypothesis where all genetic variance is due to additive genetic variance. And you can uh, look at the same estimate uh, for the same-sex pairs, for the male pairs, and for the female pairs. Of course, you can also select a different trait, for example, immunological system functions, and then uh, the scatter plot will change and the proportions will change. If you're interested in uh, knowing um, how this works for multiple traits, then just click on multiple traits, select MC versus DC, and then uh, select the actual trait level, and this will give you a table for all investigated traits, and uh, the proportions um, that uh, relate to the two null hypotheses that I explained previously. For all pairs, same-sex pairs, males and females. Okay, now let's go back to specific traits. Uh, again, we select um, function of brain. And then now we go to effect versus sample size. So in this view, you can inspect whether there's evidence for publication bias. For example, it could be the case that smaller studies were only published when they reported large effect sizes and that small effect sizes are mostly included only for um, large sample sizes. So for every trait that you would like to see, uh, you can select it from, um, from the drop-down menu and then um, have a look at whether there's evidence for uh, publica publication bias. Another feature that I would like to point out is when we go to the what's in here. So the first view is an overview of, of authors that appeared on twin study publications. So you can start by, for example, clustering by frequency. And this is just a fun uh, side of the, uh, of the website, obviously. Uh, here you will see the person that published the most publications is Andrew Heat. And um, this view is filtered by a minimum number of 23 papers, which means that uh, Only papers are included uh, where at least two uh, authors were listed that had at least 23 papers. And you can read that when you click on the information button. And this is just done for practical purposes because there were at least uh, a thousand individuals that published twin studies. So it wouldn't display nicely in your screen when we would have included all of those individuals. You can order it again by cluster. And that will show you who publishes most with who. And it maps very nicely to the known twin registry. So for example, this is the Virginia 30,000. And uh, over here we have the Dutch twin registry. We also see some people that publish outside of their own twin registry. For example, uh, these two guys uh, tend to publish a lot of papers with each other. So it gives you a nice overview of who is collaborating with who. Another thing you can see here is when you click on traits, it will show you which traits were investigated most often. So this is um, the number of uh, individual PubMed IDs uh, that were found 
in, uh, in the different domains. And it shows you that most of the studies investigated traits that were listed in our psychiatric or metabolic domain. And it will also show you whether the traits that were studied were mostly diseases or mostly non-diseases, healthy functioning. And it uh, appears that the majority of studies were about healthy functioning. And most of the traits were measured on the quantitative scale.